gonna not make that noise. Even if I drop something, I will not make that noise, I promise. Welcome back to our fall Dome to Home series. Really excited to have you and be here yet again. Um, if you are new here, my name is Ramey. I'm an astronomy student at CU Boulder and a presenter at Fisk Planetarium. And below me, we have... Yeah, hello, I'm Amanda. Um, if you, yeah, like Ramey said, if you're new, you might not have seen my face before, but some of you are probably pretty familiar with me. I'm a senior at Fisk, uh, or I'm a senior, senior at CU Boulder. I've been with Fisk my whole time. And uh, I'm really excited to, to teach you guys some cool stuff today. Yeah. So Amanda is our navigator. So everything that you see over here on our dome um, is pulled up totally live by Amanda. This isn't like a pre-recorded video that we play. Amanda does this all live, which is really cool and why we <laughs> love having our navigators. Um, also helping us today is Jeremy, who is our chat moderator and question master for the day. You might remember him as navigator for some other shows. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the chat, either behind me, next to me, wherever it happens to be. Um, and we'll be able to answer them live on the show, assuming you're watching live. So if there's anything at all that you're curious about, um, you've got three experts uh, ready to help out, so don't hesitate to ask. Um, so today we're going to be continuing our Perseverance to Mars series with this video, Carrying Out the Mission. So last week we talked about the flight to Mars, um, but today we're going to talk about, you know, what's it, what it's going to do once it's there, like what sort of stuff uh, does this rover have, what's it going to do? So we've talked um, some about Perseverance's like science goals and mentioned some of its instruments, um, but let's take a little bit of a closer look. Um, starting with the rover itself, there it is. Ta-da, what a cutie. <laughs> so <laughs> here's Perseverance. Um, you might be acquainted with it by now if you're a regular viewer. Uh, so this lovely rover was built at Jet Propulsion Laboratory or JPL in Los Alamos um, and it was hooked to a rocket and blasted off into space in July. So it looks kind of like a hybrid between like a, an ATV and a robot um, and that's because that's pretty much what it is. Perseverance has to wander around in some pretty tough terrain. Um, so we've got this behemoth here. It's like 10 feet long, um, 9 feet wide, 7 feet tall. Um, and it's over a thousand kilograms, which means that here on Earth, it weighs over 22,000 pounds. No, I'm sorry, 2,200 2, pounds. Wow, that would be really big. <laughs> 2,200 pounds, it's okay. Um, so you can see here, it's got these huge wheels to steer around and crawl over the rocks um, or to get traction on sand, because we wanna make sure that we have this rover, you know, working on like different types of ground. It's really, really sturdy. You can tilt it like a full 45 degrees without it tipping over. But, you know, we, we don't want a daredevil rover. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're gonna try avoiding any situations like that. And it, it really isn't much of a daredevil. You know, it looks like the type of vehicle you'd want to um, drive like really, really fast. Uh, but its top speed is like a 10th of a mile per hour. Um, you can walk a lot faster than this rover can drive. Uh, that means that it's being safe. Um, with all of its its instruments and conserving the rover's power, um, which uh, is, it comes from um, essentially like a nuclear battery, actually. Um, and because Perseverance is powered with this battery, um, it means that it isn't like just dependent on the sun for power. So unlike some other rovers, which fully depend on solar panels, Perseverance and its predecessor Curiosity both run on this, this little battery to keep it driving around. But we don't just want it driving, oh, yeah, there we go. So that's what the battery looks like. And inside the battery, we've got plutonium. <laughs> um, so we don't just, or actually we've got a few questions. We've got how long could a tardigrade survive on Mars from Hudson? Um, so tardigrades for anybody who doesn't know are a type of like animal here on earth. They're these little, these little things. Um, they're also called water bears. Um, and they're what's called an extremophile. It means that they can survive in some really harsh conditions. Um, as far as how long they would survive on Mars, 
uh, probably longer than one might expect. Um, tardigrades can actually like kind of shut their body down for a while so they can survive longer till they go into a space where they can live. But I don't really know a lot about biology and tardigrades. Amanda, do you? Um, I know that tardigrades can survive in the vacuum of space. So they are pretty strong suckers. And I am also not entirely sure how long their lifetime is, but I bet they could probably live comfortably on Mars for their whole lifespan. They're pretty tough creatures. They live in extreme temperatures and they're wild. Um, we also have a question uh, also from Hudson that says, how do they name the rovers? Um, that's a great question. Uh, they name rovers uh, through like surveys actually. So the most recent one, um, they had like a contest. So students um, from like kindergarten through 12th grade uh, sent in ideas for the names and then people voted. Um, and that's how we ended up with Perseverance. Uh, that's how they've been doing it recently. I think with the, the most recent ones, they've been doing these cool little contests like that, which is really neat. Um, and, uh, yeah, just like Randy said, the, the girl who actually won this contest to name Perseverance, she was only 13 years old. So it's not always adult scientists, you know, it's kids out there, maybe just your age who can get involved in one of these contests and name Rover that's going to go to space. How cool. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, so these rovers that we send out to space, um, they have a lot of scientific equipment on board, um, and it's all designed to do like various tasks and learn about the planet in many different ways. Um, and we've got, yeah, we've got a lot of science instruments here. Um, there are like seven main ones. Um, this is like all of the things on the rover. Um, there are the seven main ones though right there. And I don't really have time to go in depth on every single one of these instruments. If there's one that you're more curious about, um, definitely you can either ask in the chat or when we've got time for questions at the end. Um, but there are a few things that I wanna point out. You know, Perseverance is equipped with a number of instruments built to look at, like just look at things, you know, in a bunch of different ways. We have, you can see on there, one called RIMFAX. Um, and it's a radar tool, which is actually the first we've sent to the Martian surface um, to look underground to see like what's underground on Mars. Um, we also have some zoomable cameras. Uh, we have a few spectrometers. They're devices that split up light so that we can look at what something is made out of. Because if you know what kind of light something is reflecting or giving off, um, you can tell what the composition is. Um, there's even a device that fires lasers at rocks uh, to find out the composition, that one's SuperCam. Um, and all of these pieces of equipment have unique ways of looking at Mars and can tell us a lot about what makes up Mars. So it also comes equipped with its own personal weather station, which tells us more about the weather on Mars. So MEDA, or the uh, Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer, can measure temperature, humidity, wind speed, and direction. Um, and there it is. And it will tell us um, a lot about, you know, specific details about the environment of Mars, which can help us predict weather, um, understand dust storms, uh, just really understand the environment of Mars, which would be really helpful if we were to send people to Mars. So another interesting piece of equipment um, is MOXIE, and that stands for Mars Oxygen In Situ Experiment. Mars because it's going to Mars, in situ because basically an in situ device is something that takes readings in the place. So you've got far away technology, that would be something like a satellite looking far away, but in situ is something close by. So maybe a thermometer, you're, you're actually measuring it there. Um, and then oxygen, what it's going to do is it's going to show how to get oxygen out of the atmosphere of Mars. So the atmosphere of Mars, um, if you've watched some of our other videos, is primarily carbon dioxide, not oxygen. But oxygen is really important for breathing and for rocket fuel, too. Um, so we can use the atmosphere as a steady source of oxygen on Mars that would make things a lot simpler for having people on Mars and uh, for getting them back home as well. You don't have to take as much rocket fuel with you. <laughs> Um, so that you can get back home. So in addition to these instruments, Perseverance also comes with um, even more cameras. All in all, uh, Perseverance has 23 cameras um, and two microphones, actually. Two. <laughs> two microphones. Um, and it will mark the first time that we've actually like heard sounds of Mars. Um, we haven't like sent any microphones to other planets or anything like that. So that's that's really neat. So keep an eye out or I guess an, an ear out for the uh, greatest hits of the Martian atmosphere, I guess. Oh yeah. Mars's greatest hits, volume two. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so the last piece of uh, equipment that's on Perseverance that I want to talk about is it, um, its rock sampling mechanisms. So um, I think we've got a really neat uh, like video of what it looks like. Yes, here we go. Okay, so past rovers have looked at rocks and, you know, taken data from rocks and done experiments with rocks. We do a lot of stuff with rocks on Mars because it's mostly rocks. Um, Perseverance is going to do something new. So it's going to take these core samples like you saw there, and it's actually going to store them for later pickup. So, you know, as, as great as a rover is, and you can send a lot of equipment on it, we can't send every piece of equipment on it. So there's a lot of science that we can't do without it being on Earth, especially as new things are developed. You can't just go, oh, no, we just discovered something new. Get the rover back here so we can put it on there. Um, so the hope is that we can you know, pick up these stored samples um, and then bring them back to Earth um, in a future mission so that we can study them in like an Earth laboratory. So you can see right there um, it's storing its little rock core sample. So that's and the I type of geology we even do on Earth, but Mars. <laughs> And I even think there's like 40 storage places and, and we want to collect at least 20 samples. So if we collect 20 samples and then we're like, oh man, you know, the last four samples were really interesting. Can we get more like that? Then there's more storage space to, like Rainy said, just kind of look around and see what we find. Okay. Should be pretty neat. Um, so, okay, <laughs> my personal favorite on the Mars 2020 mission, um, it isn't an instrument on the rover, um, it is, uh, it's ingenuity. Here it is. Okay, I love it. Ask Amanda, ask anyone how much I gush over this, honestly, as we were prepping yesterday, I was just going on and on. Um, but ingenuity, in essence, is a small solar powered drone. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a small piece of equipment that flies and takes pictures and lands. And that sounds pretty simple. You know, we've all, you know, seen drones before you fly them, you land them. Um, but a lot goes into this actually. So this is going to be the first powered flight on another planetary body. You know, we've never done anything like this before. You know, we've sent rockets and we've sent things that land and I guess, you know, what is flying but falling with style and, and I think rovers do fall with style. Um, we've had like balloon experiments in, in Venus, but like powered flight we've never done before. Um, and one of the reasons is that it's like a really, it's a huge challenge um, in a number of ways. So the first thing is helicopters and planes, anything like that, they require air to fly. And I know it sounds odd, uh, but planes and gliders and helicopters all depend on the air around them. Have you ever like stuck your hand out the car window? I used to do this all the time. And if you tilt it just right, it flies up. And if you tilt it, it goes right back down. So helicopter blades, if you look at them, they're a little bit tilted, right? Um, and that's so that the air can lift it up just like your hand out the car window. Um, but without enough air, the helicopter can't really support its weight and fly. And that's why you don't really see helicopters going very high where the air is thinner. You know, as you get higher and higher and higher, there's less and less air pressure and it's tougher to just spin some blades and fly, uh, let alone, you know, control it and stay, stay flying. And on Mars, the atmosphere is very thin. You know, we've talked about it in past videos, but Mars's atmosphere is about 1% as dense as Earth's. So the air pressure at the surface of Mars is the same as the air pressure at 100,000 feet above sea level. And just to give you some context, Mount Everest, you know, the tallest mountain is about what, 29,000 feet? So that's, <laughs> it's a lot higher. Um, and helicopters, we usually like to keep them at like 10 to 12,000 feet. So they had to work really hard on this challenge. Um, so the two helicopter blades that you see there, one on top of the other, um, help it fly better because you're kind of concentrating the air there to the second one. Um, and they spin at about 70% the speed of sound. You don't want it to break the speed of sound because you'll break the helicopter, um, but they go really, really fast. Um, they sound really loud too. Um, they also worked to make it as lightweight as possible. So here on Earth, Ingenuity weighs about four pounds. So that's less than two kilos. So all that work means the Ingenuity can fly for about a minute and a half at a time all while taking pictures. And I know a minute and a half doesn't sound like much, but the first plane was only like, what, 14 seconds? So I think we're doing great. <laughs> so the other issue that they ran into uh, once they figured out how to make it fly was how to control it. So Mars isn't very close. It's a whole nother planet. Um, it's 50 million miles away. 
And um, that means it takes a lot of time to communicate. So it's about a 20 minute round trip, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it takes like 10 minutes to send something um, or to get a signal to Mars, 10 minutes to get it um, back to Earth, you know? So if you send a signal to Mars, 10 minutes, send it back, 10 minutes, then send it back to respond to it another 10 minutes. It takes a really long time. And um, that also does depend on how close Mars is, you know, because the Earth and Mars aren't always the same distance from each other. So it could take longer um, or, you know, shorter, depending on how close they are. And but I think it would actually take 20 minutes to get to Mars. So it would be about a 40 minute round trip. Ooh. It's, <laughs> it's really long <laughs> to, get, uh, to get any signals to and from. Um, so it makes it really, really hard to control things. So have you ever like tried playing a video game with a lot of lag where you're trying to control something and it can't hear you until something's already done. And by the time it tells you, hey, this changed, you were trying to do another command and it's, it's, a, it's really difficult. Or if you're ever on a, a phone call um, and there's just that like time delay there. So you're like, hey, how are you? It's blank. Good, how are you? You know, it, it, that's kind of how it's going there. So say, you know, Ingenuity's flying and we're flying it and it says, ah, no, there's a rock there. I can't land in, in, in a minute like you want me to, but it takes us, you know, 40 minutes to get that signal and get it back. It's too late. You know, um, we already tried landing it and we've already kind of ruined everything. So what JPL had to do, um, and they do this for the rover too, is build something that could, you know, fly itself. Um, so the little block in Ingenuity, um, it's outfitted with not just camera um, and controls, but it's also a lot of sensors to um, tell the little craft how to fly. And the same thing with the rover, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff to tell it how to, you know, run itself so that we're not having to tell it every little thing to do. So a lot of things are automated. Uh, we can't really give commands. It's never real like real time. Um, so if you think about this, the equipment's really far from home. <laughs> There's no one there to drive the rover, man the cameras, fix things, which means that scientists work really hard to be sure the equipment's gonna work right the first time. So it requires a lot of testing, which Amanda is our expert on about all the testing. So tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So exactly like we said, we don't wanna send something there and then try to use an instrument and that instrument just doesn't work. We really wanna be confident that it's gonna work. Um, so I'm going to play this little clip in the background. It kind of goes through a few different testing methods. And I do want to say that there are thousands of tests that have to be done to Perseverance, literal thousands of them. Um, and so you're only going to see a few here. And I want to talk about my personal favorites. So imagine building something that costs millions of dollars. And it's got a really important mission that has a very strict deadline. And you're testing something out, you're on that time crunch and something breaks. Well, that's really bad because if you need to spend time fixing your rover, you could potentially push the mission back. And we set, the, we set dates very precisely so that we can make this journey as easy as possible. So it would be really nice if we had an exact replica of Perseverance to do some testing on. And we actually do. There is another rover built exactly the same as Perseverance. It's got all the same instruments on it, same weight, same height. We couldn't tell them apart. Um, and her name is Optimism, if we wanna give our robots pronouns. <laughs> So we can see here's a picture of the two side by side. Like I said, they're exactly the same. And optim optimism isn't just nice for testing Perseverance before we send it to Mars. It's also gonna come in handy when Perseverance is on Mars because we can test out certain sequences that we want Perseverance to run on optimism. And if it does well, then we can say, all right, great. Perseverance should be able to handle this too. And also we can't just send people, we can't just send mechanics over to Mars to fi fix Perseverance. If something happens, we could recreate that problem here on the earth and see if we can get optimism to figure it out. And if we can, then hopefully we can get Perseverance to fix itself too. 
So having this twin is really nice. And you saw in that clip that they were shaking it and spinning it. And there was a whole lot going on. Um, I thought the first unassigned stand was pretty cute. It's kind of like our little baby and we needed to stand up all on its own for the first time. <laughs> um, but I want to share with you, this is my favorite part of this talk. Uh, and you could ask Ramey again <laughs> that when we were prepping for this yesterday, I, we were both saying like, oh, they have to have some kind of simulated Martian surface out there. Like, like there's no way they're just driving Perseverance around on the ground. There's got to be some kind of simulated Martian terrain. And there is, we found it. It's so cool. It's called Mars Yard. It's awesome. Here's a picture of it. And uh, so Mars Yard, it's about 66 by 63 feet long. It's pretty large. And the sand is specially made to reflect Martian sand. So there's a blend of like beach sand and some basaltic, uh, some fine ground basaltic rock in there. It gives it a good density. It almost even looks the right color <laughs> a little bit. Um, so that's really cool. We, play, we even placed some of the rocks uh, according to pictures that we've gotten from previous rovers. So they're getting the real deal here. Um, and I also learned from Ramey that the rovers don't go in there all by themselves all the time. So sometimes Perseverance and Optimism get to play in the Mars yard together. Adorable, adorable. <laughs> You've got like, um, yeah, Curiosity's uh, twin is Maggie and they kind of like dock together. They park together, which is really cute. So precious. <laughs> okay. And then the last test that I wanted to talk about uh, is actually one that I didn't really think about until I read it. It's called the sound test. And we'll pull up a picture of this rocket launch. And as I'm sure some of you guys know or have maybe just guessed, rocket launches are really, really loud. They're basically fueled by explosions. So there are, there's a lot of noise happening. There's a lot of violent shaking of the rocket. And we have to make sure that Perseverance can withstand that. So we put optimism first and then perseverance later once it, once it works out, we put it in a chamber and we subject it to this insanely loud noise, louder than it would experience on the rocket. And we do that on purpose because we want to be able to surpass that threshold and really make sure it's gonna be okay. So we subject it to this crazy shaking, this vibrating, these really loud sounds. Um, and I thought that was really neat just because of course we think about what Perseverance is going to do on Mars, but before it can do anything on Mars, it has to make it there. So this testing was crucial and it kind of opened my eyes. I didn't really think about that before. So Perseverance, it's, oh yeah, Rami, did you want to say something about that? <laughs> oh no, I was just saying there's um, like a lot of really sensitive scientific equipment. So if anything went wrong with that, you know, you, when you have a carton of eggs and a couple of them get cracked like that times a million. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, Perseverance is now tested. It's already launched. Uh, if you want to learn about the launch, we did a video last week about it. And we're really excited to see how everything unfolds. Um, we can't wait to see what those instruments are going to do and what kind of data they're going to send back. So keep your eyes open, keep your calendars marked. February 18th, that's when it's gonna land. So let's do it. We're all looking looking forward to it. If you have any plans to watch it, definitely let us know in the chat. Um, but I do wanna make sure uh, that there is time for questions. So we'll wrap it up here. Um, if you have any questions about perseverance, ingenuity, Mars, space in general, anything, let us know in the chat, wherever it is. Um, or if there's an instrument that you're most excited about, let us know. Um, if you're not watching live, definitely come back for our next show um, or leave a comment below. Um, so I saw that there is already a question in the chat. We had one that was from Uncle Iroh. Uh, it says, when do you think it will be possible to live on Mars? That's a really big question. <laughs> um, so first off, is it just you know sending humans to Mars or like living permanently? Um, the first goal is to get to the moon um, and then we can get to Mars. So 
<laughs> We're thinking that we won't be able to really send people to Mars for even just a short mission until like the 2030s, I think it is, that they're looking at. Um, we're hoping to get back to the moon um, this decade. Uh, and then once we start, you know, getting astronauts to Mars, we can start thinking about maybe having people live there. But if you think about it, when we sent people to the moon, we weren't really thinking about having people live there. Um, I think for a long time, it's just going to be doing science and having astronauts because there's a lot of dangers um, that come with space. Um, you've got you know, radiation is a really big deal. Um, we have an atmosphere that protects us from radiation, but there isn't that protection in space for the journey or on Mars. So we'd have to think about that. Um, there's the atmosphere. It's like I said, it's only 1%. It's all carbon dioxide and we need oxygen um, and, and other things. There's food. We have to think about food, power, everything like that, water. Um, so it's going to be, I think, a long time. I think we have a video that'll be coming up. I'll double check here. Preparing for humans on Mars yeah, on December 9th. So that will talk a little bit more um, about what it would take to have people on Mars, uh, let alone like living there. Um, so if I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it's a big question. I think it's going to take a really long time to actually live um, on Mars. Um, if there are any other put a number on such a delicate project. Yeah, it's it is tough. Um, if you have any other questions, definitely pop them in the chat there. In the meantime, there's some questions that we we tend to get uh, when we talk about these sort of things. Um, there's people want to know how is perseverance different from curiosity because they do look a lot alike. They're very similar. Um, I think we have a comparison in there at just how much they look alike. Um, yes, here we go. So you can see they're, they look almost like twins, but they're more like fraternal twins. They're not identical. Uh, the biggest differences would be there are, well, there are new instruments on Perseverance. We talked about some of those um, where it's going to be, you know, collecting the rock cores. It's got a microphone, radar, that sort of thing. Um, it also has a bigger hand. So that thing that reaches out, it's a lot bigger on Perseverance than Curiosity. We've got some fancy new wheels that should work better than Curiosities. Um, we've got better software and we're sending it to a different location. So those are the, the big differences. Curiosity worked really, really well. Uh, so we decided not to you know, go too far afield from what we know works and instead improved on the things that we knew needed improvement. Yeah, and uh, Curiosity and Perseverance are both kind of studying if there ever was life on Mars or if there can be life on Mars. Um, but like Ramey said, we just added a lot more instruments to Perseverance to kind of like advance the human experience. You know, Perseverance is going to get to hear Mars before any human does. So they'll have lots of stories to tell us. Really excited about that microphone. <laughs> <laughs> really excited about it too. Yeah. Um, and yeah, their goals are really similar too. Um, and we've talked about that a little bit, how the goals um, of perseverance is to look for signs of current or past life and understand um, like geology of Mars. Um, it also has that added objective though of preparing for you know human exploration on Mars that Curiosity didn't really have. And perseverance has a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> And they've got ingenuity. Um, Jeremy made a good point actually over here in the chat. Um, he mentioned that Curiosity also uses that uh, radio isotope power system that we were talking about uh, earlier, that nuclear battery. Um, a lot of the older uh, rovers use solar panels like Ingenuity are going to use, here is going to use. And the solar panels, you've probably heard how you know, solar energy works. You get it from the sun and that charges the battery and then it can run. And that works really well. But one of the problems with Mars is there are a lot of these dust storms and also nighttime happens. So it's a little more difficult. Um, the reason we lost opportunity is actually because of those solar panels getting covered in dust and then just never getting cleaned up. Um, so it can't recharge, <laughs> which is really unfortunate. I'm so sad about that still. Uh, but that's why we looked into having these like nuclear batteries because that's not something just dependent on the sun. Um, and it's something that can keep uh, the equipment kind of warm the whole time too. And I'm not sure if we got to that point in our testing clip, but they do 
put perseverance in a chamber and subject it to simulated sunlight for I think it was like almost a whole week. It was like solar test. Yeah, they just got to sit in there and then immediately after that solar test, they chilled it to Mars coolest temperature and let it sit in there for another week. So my dribble's name is Curiosity. That's so cute. (laughs) That's that's adorable. (laughs) to get a tinier gerbil and name it ingenuity oh <laughs> that would be adorable yeah. looks like we're kind of winding down on questions here um if you've got something really quick put it in the chat if something occurs to you later uh just leave a comment or there's a link to a question submission form um or come back not next week but the week after is when we're going to be back for taking a little week off um, I think that's about all the time we have, unless Amanda, there was something else we want to talk about. Um, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. Uh, if you guys are curious, we're, we're getting close. You know, curious. <laughs> you can... so we just have to persevere and then we'll be. If you have any <laughs> ingenious questions, question work. <laughs> we, we try really hard, but sometimes <laughs> puns are hard. Um, but you'll have the opportunity to ask in the future. Ha ha ha. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today and uh, giving us those questions. We had fun and I hope you did too. Um, like I said, come back and join us, not next week, but two weeks from now, that's December 2nd, to learn even more about the Perseverance rover. We're going to be talking um, all about how it's going to land on Mars, which should be really neat. So I had a great time. Um, I mean, I hope you had a good time too. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And all of you. Um, And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and pass it along to anyone you think might enjoy it as well. Uh, You can also subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And be sure to turn on notifications so that you can get alerts when we post more videos like these. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, go tell everybody about Ingenuity and Mars Yard. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Bye.